With the recent introduction of iPhone 16e, Apple discontinued the SE, which means the home button is officially dead. So today I thought it'd be fun to go over the history of the iPhone's home button and explore how it evolved over the last 18 years. Now it may not seem like it today, but back in 2007, the iPhone's home button was a completely new concept. For example, Mac computers had a desktop, but its apps were in the dock or the application section in Finder. There was no button that took you to a home screen. The iPod had a menu screen and you could navigate forward or back with a click wheel, but there was still no home screen or home button. A smartphone having just one button was such a foreign concept that Steve Jobs didn't even consider it. He thought the iPhone should have a home and back button just like the iPod and every other smartphone. But human interface designer Imran Chowdhury pointed out issues with the back button, saying it could create a trust issue for users because it would function differently depending on the situation. If users had just opened an app, the back button would take them to the home screen, but if they were navigating menus inside an app, the back button would return them to the previous menu, and if they had just switched apps, the back button would return them to their previous app, which means users wouldn't be able to predict what the back button would do. Instead, a home button made things much simpler. Press a button and the device shows you all your apps. It was an idea Jobs warmed up to, and the concept proved so successful that it remained on the iPhone for 18 years, and was also used on the iPod Nano. Now returning to the home screen was the home button's primary function, which is why it featured a rounded square to represent app icons, but there were other things it could do, like waking the display or triggering a hard reset. And in the following years, Apple would pack even more functionality into the home button. In 2008, iOS 2 introduced the ability to take screenshots by pressing the home and sleep wake buttons simultaneously. And in 2009, the iPhone 3GS received an exclusive feature called voice control that was activated by holding down the home button. It may remind you of Siri, but it was far more limited. You could use your voice to make phone calls, control audio playback, ask what song was playing, and play similar songs using the old genius feature, but that was it. In 2010, iOS 4 brought multitasking to iPhone, which was something Android users had enjoyed for years. Apple said it took them a while to add multitasking since they wanted to do it right, without complicating the user experience or sacrificing battery life. And their implementation was pretty slick. It was built into the home button. With a double press, the screen shifted upward to reveal the app switcher, which provided a shortcut to users' four most recently used apps, making navigation faster and more convenient. In 2012, with the introduction of iOS 6, Apple added accessibility options that were triggered by pressing the home button three times, like voiceover, which described aloud what was on the screen, invert colors, which made the display more comfortable for users with sensitivity to brightness, zoom, which enlarged an area of the screen, and assistive touch, which actually became really popular in certain markets since it allowed users to return home, adjust volume, lock the screen, or restart the device without using the home or volume buttons. I actually asked someone why they used this feature instead of just pressing the actual buttons, and they said it helped keep their iPhone in good condition by preventing its buttons from wearing out. And that turned out to be true, because around this time, many iPhone adopters had used their device for four or five years, and a worn out home button became a fairly common issue. Using the same button for navigation, screenshots, restarting, multitasking, voice control, and waking the display resulted in hundreds of presses a day. After years of use, the home button could lose its satisfying click and feel mushy instead. Sometimes the button became loose or fell off completely and had to be replaced. Apple eventually solved this issue, which we'll cover later, but in the meantime, they continued adding functionality. With iPhone 5S in 2013, Apple introduced biometric security, which came in the form of a fingerprint sensor embedded in the home button. It was called Touch ID, and it made using iPhone even easier. Instead of entering a passcode, a finger on the home button unlocked the device. This also worked for authenticating purchases from iTunes or the App Store, instead of entering an Apple ID password. But Touch ID didn't just change the home button's functionality, it also changed its appearance. Previously, the home button had a concave shape to make it easy to locate by touch. 
But when Touch ID was added, Apple needed as much space as possible to fit the new sensor. So they made the button flat and added a raised outer ring so users could still feel where the button was without looking. Apple also removed the button's rounded square icon, likely for a couple reasons. First, after five years, most people already knew the home button's purpose. And second, the Touch ID sensor needed a clear view to capture prints. So beginning with iPhone 5S, the home button was blank. With iPhone 6 in 2014, Apple focused on optimizing the home button instead of adding functionality. It had a new Touch ID sensor that read fingerprints twice as fast, which was an impressive improvement, but actually caused complaints, since users would wake their screen with the home button to check notifications, only for the device to unlock instantly and show their home screen, causing them to miss their notifications. So people tried pressing the home button with their nail to prevent it from reading their fingerprint, or use the sleep-wake button instead, which usually wasn't as convenient. Now in 2016, Apple finally solved the issue of worn out home buttons, because beginning with iPhone 7, the button became solid state, which means it didn't move. This was good since if it didn't click, it couldn't wear out, break, or fall off. But how would users press a non-clickable button? Well, by using something called the Taptic Engine to simulate a click. It used vibrations, or haptics, to make it feel as if the button was clicking even though it wasn't. This not only improved durability, but allowed users to customize the button's click sensitivity, with three levels of pressure to choose from. This would be the final iteration of the home button, since in 2017, the iPhone X featured swipe navigation, which did have benefits, like a much larger display. Even though the iPhone X was about the same size as an iPhone 8, it had a display larger than the 8 Plus. And because Face ID replaced Touch ID, there were no more issues with the device unlocking before users could see their notifications. But swipe navigation was a completely new concept, and many users had trouble learning it. Siri was moved to the sleep-wake button, screenshots were captured by the volume up button, and accessing the app switcher required a new drag and pause gesture that some felt was unnatural. Although the first time I used an iPhone X, I picked up swipe navigation very quickly and thought it was faster and more fluid than using a home button. And today, it appears that everyone else agrees, since the last iPhone model to have one, the SE, has been discontinued, officially marking the end of Apple's most iconic button. So that is the history of the iPhone's home button. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is Greg with Apple Explained. Thanks for watching till the end, and I'll see you in the next video.